Yeah. Here we go. Vroom, vroom. Sorry, just, sorry, give me a second. Hi there. Good morning, John. Here we go. I just had to get to the store. I was just parking my car. Hey, no problem. Did you want to go first today, John, or do you want to, uh, like, do you got to run to another meeting? Um, if I could, want... that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah, we can accommodate that. So uh, we'll let Belle go through her uh, housekeeping and uh, make sure everyone's kind of lined up right. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, and then we'll cue you to start, and then you go through the, the apparel and keep everyone comfortable in inclement weather. And yeah, uh, yeah and then I'll talk about balance afterwards. So go ahead, Bill. Hey, let me just welcome everyone. Do you want to turn the music back. off? To, yeah, I'm just going to turn it off. There we go. There you we learned go. how to get the music going. So we had a beautiful day by YouTube this morning. All right. Okay, let me just welcome everyone. Happy Tuesday. It was mm -hmm. a great long weekend for me. I hope it's a great long weekend for you guys too. And I'm just seeing other people coming in hello mariah <laughs> okay so just a quick um um housekeeping uh, housekeeping uh reminders when you're posting a question in our chat box make sure it's um addressed to panelists or to everyone so that each and every one of us can read it and we can, um, I also allowed everyone um, to unmute themselves if they want to like ask something. And um, you can always um, put in your um, questions in the chat box. I would like to introduce again, John. Hello, John, welcome back. Thank you for having uh, us with you this morning. And uh, um, he is the regional manager of Running Room and a health enthusiast. He was a previous massage therapist, uh, and um, he was um, a teacher as well. And um, his background is kinesiology. And he spent most of, of his life participating in high-level sport from rugby to international field hockey. Now his passion is golf and running for fitness. And we have Blair. Hello, Blair, welcome. <laughs> We have uh, Blair Schachter Lee of Nose Creek Sports Physiotherapy. And of course, everyone knows Blair, and he has been a physiotherapist for 28 years. We also have our guest, uh, Mariah. I don't think she's presenting today, but thank you for being here with us today, one of our massage therapists. Okay? I'm just letting other people coming in. Hello, good morning, guys. And I can bring, um, ah, I can give the floor now to John. Hi there. Oh, there. I lost your video. Oh, there there we go. <clears throat> okay, sorry about that. Um, I welcome everybody. Um, I'm actually coming to you from uh, inside our Eau Claire location this morning uh, because it's the best place to sort of show you and showcase some of our uh, 
things to keep you outside when you want to be walking outside. And of course, we have the perfect day for that. Rain, which will be good for my garden that, that just planted yesterday. So I'm not going to take up too much time today with the apparel. Uh, there's some key concepts I want you to think about when you want to go outside and be active. Okay. Number one, you want to be comfortable. Okay. Now, depending on what you want to wear, if you if you want to be wearing active wear or anything like that, a couple of things to keep in mind. Cotton is not your friend. Okay. When you're out there uh, doing exercise and there's any kind of opportunity to be sweating or even with like today where you're going to be getting wet, cotton is a plant fiber and cotton holds moisture. Okay. Plant fibers can't uh, gather moisture like we can, so they have to hold on to it. A synthetic fiber, okay, so we have some tops here, okay, they're all synthetic fibers are designed to mitigate that water, spread it out over the, over the entire garment, and then evaporate quickly. If you have water pooling in your garment, in your pants, in your shirt, shirts, anything like that, in your socks, um, that will keep you wet, it will keep you cold and it will allow areas for friction to develop and you can get nasty chafing or, or blisters. So the main thing is for us is to try and wear synthetic fibers as much as possible. Okay. So we're going to start at the, at your feet. And we're going to start with something that a lot of people don't, uh, this is a really popular thing with us. Um, and it's called the right sock. Okay. It's a synthetic sock but it's double layered. So a double layered sock, um, people of my generation remember in high school, if we were playing basketball and volleyball and we, we would wear two pairs of socks, okay? Um, and not for style or anything like that, it's because it was, you didn't want to get blisters. That sock, this one sock has the two layers built in. So you only have to put the one sock on and you have a friction free layer. They guarantee it. Um, if you get a blister wearing this sock, they will give you your money back, okay? Now you don't have to go with double layer, but you wanna have something that fits properly, okay? A lot of socks now that are single layered are fitted for right and left. Um, there's thick, there's thin, there's a whole gamut of choices to make sure that you're comfortable. Um, but yeah, you wanna make sure it's a synthetic sock, not your regular garden variety, uh, six for $8 at Walmart or Costco, right? Um, while there's a function and a purpose for those, absolutely. I still have a few cotton socks for certain occasions, like walking around the house. But when I'm in my running shoes, my walking shoes, it's a, it's a synthetic sock. Here's some shorts. Some of them come with a liner, like a longer liner. Again, we're working our way up. We're talking about synthetic fibers. The last thing you want is to have water gathering in your shorts or in your pants and getting that chafing okay uh, shirts same thing usually if you have a cotton shirt you're going to have a big sweat stain right here and it just sort of see, keeps growing and growing in these shirts you don't see that okay because the water once it hits this fiber it dissipates and it spreads it out so it makes a nice thin layer of moisture that evaporates so that it can cool you but it also doesn't chill you okay um ladies Big thing for ladies, your sports bra, okay? Your sports bra does not have infinite life. In fact, if you change your shoes every year, you should be changing your sports bra at least once a year, okay? The elastic in these tends to be put through a lot of uh, stress. It's a, sport, a piece of sporting equipment. But if you get, if this isn't fit right and you have cotton or another type of bra, I've seen, um, a, a colleague of mine once at a marathon, she had chafing from the middle of her chest all the way around to the back, okay, where her sports bra was. She had a, she had a blister about a, a quarter of an inch high. It was uncomfortable. And I can't imagine how she felt, okay? So make sure that you get fitted properly, that it's supporting you the way it's supposed to be, and it's obviously a synthetic material so that it, it helps dissipate the sweat, okay? Lastly, I'm going to talk really quickly about jackets. Now, these are running room jackets. Uh, most running jackets will be windproof and water resistant. OK, 
okay? And the main reason for that is that uh, most waterproof jackets will hold the moisture inside as well, so you get even colder and wetter, okay? So you need to be able to sweat and breathe, and then that most fibers don't handle being able to do one-way moisture traffic. Um, Gore-Tex does. Gore-Tex is a sort of a proprietary fiber that allows sweat to go out or water to transfer from the inside of the garment out and moisture on the outside not to come in to be water repellent. You'll see it on all sorts of things like shoes, jackets. It is expensive, okay? Um, uh, a lot of our Gore-Tex garments are in the, on the West Coast in Victoria and Vancouver because they got a lot more moisture than we do, but you're looking at four or $500 for a jacket, right? There are some running jackets that we have now uh, especially from a company called Ron Hill, which is out of the UK. Um, obviously, very damp in the UK. So they're used to having people running outside in the elements uh, in rain. And so they do have some jackets that have that ability to let you breathe and let you cool off and let the moisture dry off you and not let you get wet from the outside. Okay. So those are some things you want to do. The other thing with a jacket, because it's got to be windproof, the wind is what will make you super cold so if we have something even a thin layer like this jacket okay this is an older running room one um, the one thing about some of these jackets you might spend some money on them but they last and look great forever like this jacket's about eight years old and I still feel comfortable and fashion forward to come out with it um, some of our uh, reflect jackets this is you'll see these all over the place these have been around for 36 years right um, they, they will be good in summertime, in the wintertime. They're baggy enough that you can layer underneath them. Um, but the main thing is it keeps the water, the wind off you so that you don't over chill. Okay. If you do end up going into a point, I'm just going to see if I can find it here. If you do end up needing something like you've got blisters or, or chafing or you have something and you still want to be active, but you don't want to be continually rubbing. You can get something like Body Glide or my favorite, the Sports Shield. This one lasts for 24 hours. It doesn't wipe off. It doesn't wash off. It's silicone based. Um, I wish I'd had that when I ran my marathon. I wouldn't have had the big blisters that I had. Um, but yeah, something like that so that you can have, and that Body Glide is good too. It kind of goes on like a deodorant stick and you can actually like use it for windproofing on your face instead of the old school Vaseline that we used to put on our face. You goop up in a petroleum jelly. That's really nasty. Um, body glide, you can just put it on your face and that's a windproof barrier. So if you're in a place, I don't know, out in, uh, in where I live up in the Northwest, we get some really nasty wind. And sometimes you come home and you look like you've been, you know, sunburned just on your cheeks and your end of your nose. Um, so having that around, I would say that if you have one for your face, write on it with a jiffy marker face so you don't use it on any other part of your body uh, and then on your face again keep it separate um, does anybody have any questions about how we're, we're what we're doing with our layering and synthetic fibers um, you talk about I... pants pants oh, yeah same thing so so there's a couple of different options uh, for pants again um, this time of year, we're, we're, we're doing a lot more in shorts, obviously, because right. it's nicer weather. Um, yeah. You can also get like running tights or walking tights or a nice loose fitting pant. The main thing too, though, again, um, keep yourself in a synthetic fiber. The, old, the days of the old gray sweatpants, you know, the old jogging pants, um, it just holds the moisture and then they get heavy. Um, there's a really neat product from... Um, Mizuno. Mizuno makes it has a fabric called uh, Breath Thermo. Great for the winter time. Not so great for summertime because uh, it, when it gets wet, it heats up. Um, and it's a mechanical thing. So even if you wash it, you won't wash the fat, the, the product off. Um, you just hang them to dry and they're dry within like a half an hour. Right. So as water transmits through the fabric, it warms up which is great for wintertime or fall or a cold rainy day like today, if you wanted to keep your muscles warm. Um, again, so many styles, you can have a tight, you can have a fitted pant, you can have a tapered pant, you can have a loose bottom pant. 
just make sure that it's synthetic and not cotton, okay? Jeans, not great if you're walking in, in uh, the rain, right, outside. So try to make yourself, you can have a windproof pant too. Uh, just understand that uh, your legs are big muscle, have big muscle groups. You don't need to protect them as much as you think you have to. The main thing is keep your torso and your arms uh, warm and protected and your legs will, will take care of themselves. They can generate a lot of heat. Does that John, help there, boy? Yeah, John, is there um, any sun protection within the um, sport the body glide? Uh, no, there's no UP, uh, there's no SPF factor in those. So you'd still want to use a, a sunscreen. Um, and the stuff that we carry now, and I don't know if we have any here, um, but we did, we do carry like a 50 SPF. Um, we got to understand that the, the rays that we're seeing now are not the same as they were when I was a kid. It's a lot easier to get uh, sun damage. Um, and, and so make sure you're using a fairly high SPF. Oh, perfect. Well, the manager, Tina, has gratefully pulled one of them out. So that's just one version, right? But an, a 50 SPF. Um, so yeah, so you want to keep, keep that on. Many, many kinds of things. Here's a, a cream version, right? So something that's not gonna run or, or anything like that into your eyes, but yeah, the body glide doesn't do any um, sunscreen. So you wanna have a good sunscreen for when you're out there. Don't forget the back of your neck. People forget that sometimes. And then they're really tender back there, but yeah. Um, and you want something that's not too oily or greasy, right? You want something that's just gonna give you the protection without, and you'll have to reapply. That's one thing people don't realize with sunscreen. You gotta reapply often. Right, it doesn't last all day. Thanks okay. for that question. Anything else? Um, I just wanna make one comment too, John. Like I've got a lot of uh, running room pants over the years back uh, in my running days and uh, I still have them. Like uh, just to kind of reinforce what you just said, like you might pay a little bit more for these products, but boy, are they ever durable. Um, yeah. and I've got the tight running tights. I've got the loose fitting ones. Uh, I've got all the different styles and I love all of them. And, and even in the winter, uh, as an extra layer, when it is cold outside, you can just put those underneath your, your winter pants and it just gives you an extra layer of protection. So it is yeah. really high quality stuff. And, uh, yeah. the breathing component is so important nowadays. Uh, and I just love that the clothing technology is finally caught up. You know, for years, uh, you know, like when I was a kid, it was always the sweaty <laughs> sweatpants. And the, yeah. you, by the time you finish your workout, you're, you feel like you're heavy because your clothing is kind of dragging you down. And uh, it's so refreshing to have a jacket, especially a windbreaker that actually breathes. Um, yeah. So uh, you might spend a little bit more in John's shop. But you're going to get some high-quality products there, you guys, and nothing, some stuff that you won't regret buying. Uh, the, other, the other thing that you get in this technology, too, is the odor protection now. Like, Oh, wow. That's just, it. it it actually sort of stops you from uh, from the bacteria forming, and, and that we had we had um, it started a few years. But when I started with running room ten years ago, we had a yeah. sock that had silver uh, silver threads woven into them. Yeah, and uh, it was to, for odor protection. Now that's sort of commonplace. That's it's a it's a natural thing. Um, one thing I would mention um, with running room brand products so anything that has a running room label on it it comes with a one-year fitwear guarantee so if a wow. seam comes undone or a reflective patch sort of peels off we replaced it within the first year so um wow, that's great guarantee. Money, but uh but but you'll also you get a good we stand by everything so we know that it's it's going to work for you for a long time and like i said i got run jackets from years ago i know i should probably update my style and promote the newest <laughs> but uh, when I got five running jackets and they're all still like brand new um, I don't need to so anyway yeah. awesome and you're coming from my favorite location that's the one that's closest to us right down in Eau Claire yeah we are we yeah. have Eau Claire where we opened up on Thursday um, oh super uh, so we're back to business we're open Tuesdays through Sundays we're taking Mondays off to make sure okay. that we can in the stores and uh Till the end of May, all Brooks products are 20% off regular priced. And wow. we also have uh, a sale on all of our older pro stuff. So I think it's, I can't remember. I saw the email this morning, but we have another sale going on this week. So um, check us out online. 
We're still doing curbside pickup. We're still doing online deliveries and we do have some limited hours uh, for the stores so that people can come in and try on their stuff if they need to. There we go. Okay. Well, that's super. Thanks, John. Does anybody have any uh, last questions before John heads out to his next meeting? Um, so I have a tip for, for John. Okay. Uh -huh. And um, this is for your marketing. So as you all know, I started kayaking. And those products that you spoke about um, that are synthetic, you got to market those to kayakers. Oh, okay. There you go. Because yeah. when, we, when we go over and we're in the water, we don't want anything that absorbs water. And so that's what we tell all of our paddlers, no cotton. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Stick that on your site. I will definitely do that. I will definitely not, look into that. Not just that for running. <laughs> yeah, no, for any activity. Walking, running, playing in the squash courts, whatever you need. You, you want to make sure that you're doing that. So Awesome. And you've got some stores on the island and down in Vancouver, right? We do. Yeah, we're yeah. from the coast. So, awesome. uh, yeah, we got lots of uh, locations. And, again, we're still doing our – our straight to home delivery from our online shops. It's a big, big thing for us. And uh, if you order stuff and you have it delivered to your house, um, we actually send returns labels and, uh, and resealable bags so that if it doesn't work when you get it, you can send it back to head office. We'll quarantine it and do all the right things. But yeah, it, it, basically we want to make it as worry free as possible for our customers so that they can still get the, what they need to stay active in these uh, weird times. Yes. Wow. Well, that's great. That's awesome service. Super duper. Anyone else have any questions? Great comment, Cheryl. That's good feedback for kayaking yes, community. I will be out looking into that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Might be some more sales there in the, <laughs> the paddlers. That's great. Okay. Well, have a great day, John. Thanks for popping in. Thanks. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, the weather turned out perfect for your presentation today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. Perfect. All right. Super. And then uh, if people want to get a hold of you, John, what's the best way to get a hold of you? You can get me uh, at uh, my email is j h r y t s a k at runningroom.com, or you can call me directly at 403 804 5734. Just I almost give my wife's phone number there for a second. That's 04 <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Yeah, 804 5734. Awesome. That was really nice. Now he's giving out his personal cell phone number to you guys. Well, so if you have phone. any questions, <laughs> there you go. Awesome. All right. Well, take care, John. Okay, Thank you guys. very much for your presentation. Have a great day. We'll see you next week. You bet. Yep. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Super. Okay. So that was great. We learned lots about apparel and uh, they do have really high quality uh, stuff to wear outside when the weather is inclement and you want to be comfortable. So don't be afraid to talk to John if you have any questions about uh, any sort of piece of clothing. All right. So now we'll get into the second half of our presentation. So today we're going to talk about balance. And uh, balance is so important because we want to prevent any future falls. So really today's theme is more about prevention. Um, so my first question, you guys, is I just want to do a quick survey of the group is it, it, put in the chat box sort of yes or no. Has anyone ever felt unsteady during their life or even recently? Just say yes or no in the chat box. What do you mean? So meaning that you can't, you've lost your balance a little bit. Feel like you're a bit off, you're, 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 you're kind of slipping and you're not really quite all there. Yeah. So um, some of us are going to have, you know, that feeling. Uh, some of that's induced, uh, you know, from long weekend partying as well. <laughs> that's called the unidentified party injury when people come in and they slip and fall and they say, I can't remember how, I, how it all happened. <laughs> we usually see that when actually in January people come in after the New Year's parties. Uh, but just without joking aside, um, you know, how, my next burning question is how many actually are doing the interval walking that John talked about last week? So the, the brisk walking with the short arms, increasing the frequency, and then the long walking with the long arms. Put in the, the uh, yeah, go ahead and just put yes or no in the chat box. Awesome. That's great. And uh, I played with it a little bit too, and it really does work great, doesn't it? A couple of my patients came into the clinic last week and they said, yeah, I've been doing that interval work and that really works. And so the whole idea is we want to get your heart rate up and then we kind of recover and then we just keep doing that up and down sort of interval work. And that's what trains your heart. If you just walk slowly, you're not going to get any sort of uh, physiological benefit to your cardiovascular uh, or your, your muscles and joints aren't going to get a really good efficient workout. Um, there was a fellow, maybe I'll just quickly share this, uh, that did, testing on interval work and so it's called hit therapy which is high intensity interval uh sort of workouts and so he had 
two groups of people. So he had his, he called it his one minute exercise group. And then he had another group that they cycled for 45 minutes. The, they ran the test for about three months down at McMaster. And so three times a week, one group would cycle 45 minutes and the other group had five minute warm up. And then they did three 20 second intervals as hard as they could with a one minute kind of rest in between. So that's why he jokingly called it the one minute workout. They did biopsies and blood work before and after the study. And what he was trying to prove is that time isn't such a big issue when it comes to basic physiological changes to your muscles. And so what he was looking at was the mitochondria, which is kind of the powerhouse of our cells that sort of gives us energy uh, and feeds our muscles. And he said uh, the people that had the biggest changes in those were the people that did the high intensity interval therapy. So his big conclusion was that you don't need 45 minutes to change your muscle you know, health. You just need a few intervals each day to really kind of ramp that up. And so by doing interval walking, you're gonna get the benefit of that. Um, so that was really interesting sort of research uh, that he came up with. And I really always try to share that with my patients. And like my wife said the other day, she did 90 minutes on the bike. And I said to her, well, you don't need to do 90 minutes. You just need to be doing more intervals. And you could probably do a ton of work in half an hour instead of 90 minutes. Um, so keep that in mind as you're walking to, to do those little bursts if you can. Good. And so the other thing is I was doing some research and I didn't want to bore you guys to death uh, because a lot of the research on falls comes from seniors uh, in Canada. And uh, I did sort of grab one paragraph that I would like to read to you here. So I'm just going to take this right out for the research that was done kind of with one of our national groups here in Canada. As a result of our societal changes and the progress made in areas such as public health, healthcare, living conditions, social norms, and individual choices, Canada has a vibrant aging society and one of the highest life expectancies in the world. Over the years, Canada has laid a foundation for good health and well-being across the course of our lives. And there's three research projects sort of proving that. However, as our population ages, fall prevention will continue to be a very significant public health issue for which we need to focus our efforts and we are required to maintain and improve the quality of our lives and the well-being of our seniors. And so I'm not a senior yet, but sooner or later I will be. And what I'm trying to teach you guys today is that um, we can still improve our balance. Even when we're seniors, we get people in the office and we see huge changes, uh, even just over you know, a month of working with them. So as we know, walking stimulates bone density. And if we're active, if we're not active, we're going to have soft bones. If we have soft bones, if we do slip and fall, we're at high risk for a fracture. And as we get into our seniors, those fractures can be very traumatic and really reduce the quality of our life. And in some cases, some seniors may actually pass away due to the trauma and the bleeding that could occur, uh, you know, from the, the fracture and, and the stroke and all these other problems that can occur. So really our goal today is to be proactive with our balance and sort of look at ways that we can maintain it, if not improve prove it. So um, the biggest reason why our balance weakens, I feel, is as we age, we're not stimulating our, our neuroreceptors and our proprioceptors, our, ba our balance nerves, basically, as much as we used to. Shoot, when we were young, we used to run around constantly. So we're constantly stimulating our nervous system and we were retraining our brain and our body to accommodate those changes in the uneven terrain, you know, jumping, hopping, uh, all those sort of things. And then as we age, we're not as active. You know, you get into your middle uh, part of your life and you, you're promoted to a middle management job where you're sitting in a desk for eight hours a day. And, you know, we talked about sitting disease before and how risky that is to our health. Um, but, you know, with comp with COVID-19, I mean, this whole thing has been compounded even more and, and I've been calling and reactivating a lot of my patients and even the ones that don't come into the clinic, I'm saying, you got to stay active, like get out and walk three times a day and keep your body pumping. Don't just lay around the couch because you're going to get, uh, you know, certainly uh, worse as far as your health status goes for a variety of, you know, sometimes give them some of the sitting disease research to motivate them. So our goal today is prevention. And uh, what I wanted to do is show you some exercises to improve your balance um, so that if you do, if you're walking along doing your exercise walks and you, t you hit a bit of a pothole in the road, you're going to be able to react quick and save yourself and not fall over and potentially injure yourself um, and, you know, have a bad contusion or a joint sprain. Uh, most commonly see people that come in and they'll actually put their hand out to break their fall and they end up fracturing their wrist. We call that a fall on outstretched hand. So it's kind of the mechanism of injury or you might slip and fall and actually land directly on your hip and, and break your hip as well, which would be a lot more traumatic and obviously slow you down a lot further. Um, so, um, so today's little win is I'm going to go over my favorite uh, static balancing drills with you. And these you can do anywhere. So you don't need to go to a gym. You can do these in the comfort of your own home. So I'm going to balance, uh, talk about one leg balance exercises. Well, let's just stand up now. We've all sat kind of long enough. And what I'll do is I'll kind of demonstrate these. And so what I'm going to do is just flip off my little slippers here. I'm going to come back this way. And what I'll try and do is kind of maybe lower this just a little bit so you can kind of see 
my legs. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have my arms out. Okay. So everybody stand like a scarecrow. And what I want you is to pick one of your legs because we're going to do both. And I want you just to tighten up your tummy and uh, just lift one of your foot. I'm going to take my right one first. I'm going to stand on my left one completely. And I'm actually going to pucker my arch. I'm actively going to kind of grip the floor. Now I'm standing on a little exercise mat. So it's really easy to kind of grip that mat. And then I'm going to put my arms out like this. That's called static balancing. Now, some of you might find that you're like, whoa, and you have to put your foot down and correct. That's okay. Uh, the, the key with balance training is you have to kind of fail forward. So you actually want to get to the point where you have to tap out each time because as you're tapping out your brain and your nerves and your, your spinal cord that go right into your feet are learning how to sort of hold that posture. So um, again, if you draw your belly button up and in, that tightens your core, often makes it easier to balance. And then if you can have an active foot and pucker a little bit, we're just going to hold statically. Now, once you can hold statically for 30 seconds, and you're like, this is easy. Then what I want you to do is start challenging yourself by doing arm circles, okay? So you're gonna do small arm circles. And if you had a previous shoulder injury, just make sure you keep the, the circle kind of below your shoulder height. If you're way up here, that might actually aggravate your shoulder. So just kind of do them just below shoulder height. And then as you're getting better, more comfortable, you can do them a little bit bigger. You can do them a little bit faster if you want. So that's four. And we call that symmetrical because both arms are doing the same movement. And then we're gonna go backwards, okay? So now we're gonna do backwards. And we're doing at least 30 sort of revolutions as we do this. And you might kind of shift around like I'm doing right now and if you have to tap out that's okay just put your foot down and reset your body and then continue on okay so generally these get to be pretty easy pretty fast most people are pretty stable okay now let's just try the other leg so switch legs now you might even find that that left hip starts to fatigue a little bit so it's good to kind of switch it up try your right foot okay draw the belly button up and in and then grab that floor with your foot and then static and then now here we go we're going to do forwards now just nice and slow okay and then most of this shoulder circle again is below shoulder height so you don't hurt her shoulder. And then if that's easy, we've done 30 of those and then we're gonna go backwards, okay? Now I'm just doing sort of 10 of each one, but you guys can take your time and do 30 if you want at home. And you're gonna wobble around. Like my ankle right now is kind of tw quivering and moving around, that's good. That's the retraining that we need. And those are the fast switch fibers that are firing. And then you can sort of stop there, take a break. And then the next one I like to do in standing is what we call an asymmetrical movement. So instead of the arms doing the same thing, the arms are actually doing the opposite. I know that sounds complicated, but here's how I simplify this. I just say to you, okay, tighten up the tummy, grab the floor with your foot, and then pretend you're swimming, okay? So you literally just do the front crawl. And uh, what happens when you do the front crawl is it creates trunk rotation. And as we get the trunk rotating, the hip has to rotate, the knee has to rotate, and now your poor little foot down there is working really hard to kind of maintain your trunk uh, sort of uh, balance, your weight of your body on that foot, okay? And then you do 30 of those, okay? And then again, we uh, try that backwards, so same leg. Now we're just gonna try backwards like the backstroke, okay? So just nice and slow, whoa, a little bit of a shift there. Just back and forth. And then as you come back, try to lead with your pinky as you go back, and just like that, okay? And that would be the left one. Let's try the right one, same idea. So we're gonna now stand on your right foot. We're gonna tighten up our tummy, whoa, okay? Get your balance first, get your static balance first, and then away we go, let's start swimming. So left, right, left. Right, just like that, just nice and slow. You don't have to do a quick jerky movement. You're gonna generate that trunk rotation, which is really what we're after here, which then causes the hip to rotate, the knee to rotate, and the foot to really actively grip that floor and hold you stable. And then we stop and then we go backwards. So then it's just backwards rope like this. And again, leading kind of with your pinky as you're going back, okay? Now, that is the arm movements. The other thing you can do is you can take your non-weight bearing foot. So let's switch back to left, standing on the left leg now. And then pretend what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tilt my uh, laptop down here so you can see this. You're gonna take your foot, okay? And you're gonna pretend you're drawing in the sand with your big toe. So I'm gonna do a capital A and then a capital B, okay? And then a C and then a D. Okay, so just like that. And you'll probably find that you get about halfway through the uh, alphabet and all of a sudden, oh man, the hip is tiring out. So if that's happening, just switch legs and then start on the other side and then come back and finish the alphabet on that side. And then as you're finding that that's getting easier as you're doing your alphabet, so let's switch legs now. Try the other side, B, C, D, and then E, and then F. Over time, what you want to do is do a bigger movement. So do a bigger letter because with a bigger letter, now what we're doing is we're working our ankle, our knee, and our hip. And by driving the movement through the hip, so a big A in a few, a few weeks might look like this. It's almost like, almost like martial arts. Those of you that have done kicking sports or any sort of movement like that. And that'll really challenge your balance with uh, doing the, uh, and I call that the ABCs, okay? And don't worry about writing this down, by the way, because uh, Belle's going to send you a handout. Uh, she may have sent it already. Belle, did you already send the, uh, the email of the one?
Not yet? Okay, so she's promised me she'd do that for you guys this morning. Uh, but she hasn't got to it yet because I've been keeping her busy. So that's kind of the basic symmetrical arm movements, asymmetrical arm movements, and then the ABCs with the eyes open. So you'll do that, and you'll probably find some of you within two to four weeks, you're like, man, this is easy. Why did Blair give me this? So at that point, what we do is we actually do the same thing. We start with static again, but now we're going to close our eyes. Let's everyone try this and have one foot just one inch off the floor and just close the eyes. Now, you're going to wobble a lot more. If you need to tap out, that's okay. Go ahead and tap out. Okay, and then just watch your, just wiggle away. And it'll take you, it may take you some of you, you know, like say two to four weeks just to get comfortable with static balance with the eyes closed. And you will wobble more, but that's good because that's more work that's going on there. And again, we're very safe because all we need to do is tap our other foot down. We've got our balance, okay? Um, some of my seniors, uh, they like to do it in the kitchen because they'll, they'll be on the one foot and they can tap their foot down, but they like the, to know that they can tap their hands on the counter as well. So those of you that are really struggling with the balance or having the back of a chair kind of handy in front of you as well, that's just another way to make you feel a little bit more safer. Um, but again, with the, the, the level two now eyes closed, if uh, your static balance becomes very stable, Mine's actually quite, quite shaky on that side. Let me try my right side. You'll find you're probably a little bit better on one side than the other too, and then that's okay. I'm on my right side now, and I find this a lot easier actually because that's my dominant side. Uh, then once you're comfortable with eyes closed, then you can start doing your, your arm circles with your eyes closed and then the other way. But just start small, and then you'll get better and better. So you do the exact same drills that we just went through but with your eyes closed. And that's kind of taking your balance to the next level. So once the ones I taught you with the eyes open are good, the symmetrical circles, asymmetrical arm movements, and the ABCs, then challenge yourself by doing it with the eyes closed, okay? And that's what we call static balancing. And that's, if you look at the handout you're gonna receive later on this morning from Bill, that's basically, there's uh, five different exercises on here. The first two we just covered, okay? Which require no equipment. The next three, uh, number three is a rocker board that we sell at the clinic that's basically just a tilt board that goes back and forth. I'm just going to maybe have a seat here so you can kind of see me here a bit better. So the, um, the wobble or the rocker board is basically a board that just tilts side to side like this, or you can put it front to back. So it's just what I call one plane of motion. And then we also have uh, wobble boards that are kind of round, so they're three-dimensional. And those are actually quite challenging. So you want to sort of get really good at the, the one plane first, and then you can progress to the, the round wobble boards. And again, we usually start with people statically with two feet on those wobble boards, tilting back and forth, and then side to side. Once they're comfortable with two feet, then we get them standing with one foot. Uh, and those, you'd probably want uh, standing balance sticks or being close to a counter or a table, you know, in your house if you can. And then uh, BOSU. BOSU is kind of one of those. You've probably seen those in the gym because uh, they're, they're all over fitness now. It's kind of like a half moon kind of blue uh, sort of ball that's basically got a firm bottom on it. And we get people standing on that as well, just with their arms out, just like we talked about before and doing what we call static balancing. And what's happening is we're destabilizing your base so it's a lot softer, softer so it's multidirectional, so it's a lot harder than the, the rocker board would be. Um, and then the other thing we have is core discs that you can purchase as well. And these are actually my favorite, to be honest with you, because the core uh, ball is about, the, we have a knockoff, uh, I think it's $115, somewhere in that range. Uh, the original one that's even bigger is like, it's over $240, I think. So they've almost priced that one out. But these are like $35. And so you can actually buy two of those. And so for $70, you can have two. And what I get my patients doing is just standing on them and doing gentle one-third squats. So just gently bending their knees and kind of bouncing up and down. And then once they're comfortable with that, then I get them to actually do what I call the metronome. So the metronome, for those of you that are taking music, is that, that uh, um, machine that goes tick, tock, tick talk that music instructors will use to set a rhythm with their their students and so what we're doing here is we're just standing and we're just literally going one two three one two three and we're lifting our foot off the core disc or if you're not comfortable lifting it right off you can actually just shift the weight 90 10 so i usually tell patients start by just shifting your weight 90 10 so that uh you're not actually taking your foot off the core disc. And we usually, again, have balance sticks or be close to a counter if you're doing that. And so those are great ways to kind of dynamically wake up those, those nerves. Because the stuff I just showed you is kind of the beginner stuff. So you will find that that stuff does get easy. So a lot of this equipment, um, 
you know, we sell in the clinic. So if you live in our neighborhood, you can just stop by and pick some up if you want to advance your balancing. Or if you're in Nanaimo, uh, like uh, I know Davis and, and Cheryl are kind of on the island, uh, then you would just order through www.fitterone.com. So Louis, that we do the presentations with on Thursday, uh, could definitely ship you some of that, that balance equipment. And uh, he's got some really fun stuff. So I hope to can engage him with some of the standing uh, balance stuff. We did the sitting stuff last week. So we'll get him doing some standing stuff with our golf presentation as well. Hello, um, yes. Um, just a question on the, I, I've seen some pe people use a, a balance board. And mm -hmm. so they, they have a, just a board and, and um, something that um, they put the feed on either side of the board and they have something that they pivot or just go back and forth rock back and forth on the board yeah and, and it just goes it. one direction yeah that yeah, one so what one direction? That's what I've seen anyway. Yeah, that's what we call the rocker board, Davis. Um, so the difference between the rocker board and the wobble board is the wobble board is the round one with kind of a round bottom on the bottom. Be careful if you're buying one of those, just make sure that it's a, got a shallow bottom. Uh, some of them are quite steep and they're really made for people in their 20s that are kind of high, high, high level athletes. I can't even balance on those darn things anymore. So I, I kind of, in fact, I think I've got rid of some of those just because they're a high fall risk for our, for our clients in our clinic. Um, yeah, so those are, those are great and they don't break down. Like um, they're solid, they're made, like if you buy them from Louis, um, He's got smaller plastic ones if you just wanted a, a more economically priced one, but he builds hard wooden ones that'll never break down. They're solid. Um, so I tell people for $84, you've got it for life. It'll never, you'll never have any problems with it. So, and I do like the rocker boards. Uh, I just find those for seniors a lot safer than the round wobble boards. The round wobble boards are pretty challenging because it's, it's sort of a, like a three-dimensional challenge versus a one-dimensional sort of challenge. Okay. Yeah. So those are great. Um, Good. I, I so, have noticed that okay. my balance, um, I, I used to have very good balance, but it, it no longer. <laughs> That's uh, right. Yeah. So these exercises are, are really good. Yesterday I was uh, playing some tennis for the first time in a long time. And, and how'd it go? I noticed uh, because there's a lot of movement and different stops and starts and back yeah. and forth and uh, I, I was noticing the balance issue came to the fore when I was trying to move back in the court, and I used to do that no problem, but now I have to watch myself. I just have to watch that I don't fall. Yeah. Yeah. So um, for tennis, too, you might want to practice, uh, you know, just shuffling kind of side to side. Uh, and actually, and then turning and pivoting a little bit too, even without the tennis, like you could have the tennis racket in your hand if you wanted to, but just kind of feet together, feet apart, little hops like that, shuffling back and forth to get that side to side motion going. Sometimes you need to kind of wake up those muscles that haven't done that for a while too, Davis. Tennis is really dynamic. I mean, when you watch tennis, you think, oh, that looks easy. It's a lot like golf though. I find it, it's very technical sort of, uh, you know, how you hit the ball, how you address your stance. Like there's a lot of little things that can make a big difference. Um, so yeah, enjoy the tennis and the balance, the better your balance is, the more you're going to enjoy your tennis too. And that's a, the thing about these sort of skills is these are life skills that we just want to enhance so that you can have a high quality life and really prevent any sort of bad falls or, or sprains. Um, people that have really good balance rarely sprain their ankles unless they're on really high risk sort of uneven train running up and down a mountain or something like that. Um, but yeah, so in a court, you just want to make sure you got really good footing and, and just get the, the endurance up. And yeah, these balance exercises will definitely help. Good. Does anybody have any other questions before I move on with uh, in regards to the one leg balance drills we just covered? No. I think it's pretty straightforward and, and they are sort of great because they are kind of simple. And that's why I like to always start rehab is let's just keep it simple and let's just start incorporating. And, and again, if you find it easy, the other thing is ingre increase the volume. So you want to build your endurance if you can. So if you can do like 30 circles and you're finding it easy, maybe do like 50 or 60 circles, you know, and, uh, but if you are getting one hip or one troll that's getting sore, just try to alternate sides if you can and always do it on both sides. And what I tell patients too, when they come in, 
And when they're doing the BOSU, especially, I'm like, stand on your injured one, then stand on your good one. If there's a big difference from your injured one to your good one, go back and do the injured one a second time. So you're probably going to find as you do this, that one side is not bad. The other was really weak. Like you really struggle on that side. So you almost want to do twice as much balance work on that weak side, if you can, to sort of try to bring it back up to the same level of your good side. And typically for a lot of people, they're better on their dominant side, like I was demonstrating here, than their non-dominant side. And that's because we tend to step and reach with our dominant arm. So we're stepping forward with our dominant leg more frequently. So we tend to have a little bit better balance on that side. Good. Awesome. So this will be, uh, no pun intended, a step in the right direction for everybody. And uh, I'm really excited to hear that people are doing the interval walking and starting to get their heart going. And, and uh, if you can add in some balance stuff, this will definitely make you safe while you're out there increasing your volumes. And again, uh, Bill will send you the handout uh, later on this morning. And so you guys can review that as well. And... Uh, yeah, and John already did his apparel chat, so that was really good. Um, John's really good. He really knows his stuff, and if you guys need stuff, definitely seek help with him. And uh, just a quick sneak peek for next week. Uh, we've got uh, Mariah, who you see in the, the uh, monitor there, who's our amazing massage therapist. So she's going to come back and talk about self-massage techniques with you for those persistent knots, you know, in either your forearms or your legs that you just can't get away. So she's going to teach you some secret tips on how to basically get that tissue moving again and get rid of that painful knot in your body. Uh, especially while we're closed. We hope massage will open in the next few weeks, but uh, so there might be some te techniques that she could teach you. And these are great techniques to even do if you're traveling and you can't access uh, your favorite massage therapist right away. <clears throat> and John is also going to talk about his guide to your walking program, which will help motivate you to be healthy and also prevent injury. So a lot of what John does too is geared towards, uh, you know, preventing an injury. So just make sure you don't miss out on that one. That'll be our fourth one in the series and that'll complete our uh, kind of series for the month. And then uh, Bill and I have to sit down and reevaluate and see if we will continue doing these or what you guys, uh, we love your feedback if you want us to continue. And uh, we might do some more down the road. Uh, we are looking at uploading these to our YouTube channel as well. So Bell is just in the process of uh, getting my phone tomorrow and she'll start uploading these. So if any of your friends or family have any interest in any of these topics, then just say, uh, tell them to just check out the Nose Creek YouTube channel. And all these presentations will be uh, basically put up there. Or if you have, uh, you know, some, something you wanted to review, then you can just go back to that YouTube channel. And Bell's going to sort of label them with the same topics. And uh, so we'll have, uh, looks like about eight hours of content so because we've done two present ser presentation series over four weeks um, and so lots of great material there for leading an active lifestyle and again if you're interested in, in engaging with us uh, feel free to uh, go to our website and uh, download any of the free reports on the different body parts you might be struggling a little bit with right now and learn a little bit more about the body part that you're having a concern with um, if you want you can uh, give bell a shout and we can book a free discovery visit online as well so we can set some goals and and help you out that way uh, the virtual has been just uh, really uh, great. I've been doing it for now for six weeks, and I've just thoroughly enjoyed it. In fact, I'm jumping on my virtual treatment schedule this afternoon to, to help some more patients out. And uh, if you're really kind of stuck and you're just tired of this persistent pain that doesn't go away, then by all means, just give Bell a show. We can even just set up a, an evaluation right away. And, uh, you know, at that point, we can decide whether we get you in the office or whether we can start virtually. Uh, either way, if we're not sure, we always like to do that discovery visit online to sort of get a real sense of where, where we're at and what we need to do with you and then make a decision sort of based on the, our experience with you. And... Uh, and that's pretty well it. That's my topic for the day. So balance to prevent falls. And then John talked about apparel. So any closing questions or remarks or feedback? Thanks so much. Hey, you're very welcome, Cheryl. Yeah. Okay, so here's my magic question. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst presentation you've ever seen, 10 being awesome, can you rate our presentation today? And Just put it in the chat box. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, Davis. <laughs> Yes, super. And Bell's already chiming in saying, see you guys next week. Super duper. Yeah. All right. And so Melissa yeah. will be talking about massage techniques. That'll be a great one. I'm going to make sure I don't miss that one either because I, I want some secret tips on how to loosen my aging body up. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys take care. Blair, uh, get I just outside. want to say thanks yeah. for the uh, heel drop. Oh, uh, you're very welcome. Yeah. Thanks. Is that going right. okay, Davis? Yes, that's very okay. good. Super. Yeah, just go slow. That's what I was trying to say to Bell in that email there is that uh, we originally built that way back when, when I used to work at UFC uh, a lot of years ago, and it was built for 20 year old sort of uh, varsity athletes. And so, you know, I'm 51 now and I know that I can't progress from one level to the next. So these guys could literally go from one level to the next level within a week. 
most of my patients, it's minimum two weeks, sometimes three, sometimes four before they're symptom free, before you can kind of go to the next level. And as you see, there's four levels in that. Um, so just take your time, Davis. Um, you know, anyone in their 60s and 70s, I'm like, do it until it's comfortable. Once it's comfortable and you're like, no symptoms after doing it, then you can go to the next level. And again, the, the four levels are basically slow down with two feet, okay, until that becomes symptom free, and then fast down with two feet. Okay, until that becomes symptom free. And then we start with one foot, full body weight, slow down. Okay. And then once that becomes pain free, then you can start doing a faster drop down with one, le with one leg. And it is a bit of a journey for Achilles tendinosis. But if you really stick to that, and for you, it'd probably be anywhere from 12 to 16 week program, you will actually cause that tendon to regrow and thicken and be at a better, stronger tensile load so that you prevent the, the inevitable tear that a lot of my colleagues have already had. I think half of my buddies have already torn their Achilles tendons in their 40s. Um, so... So really, I, I do that twice a week myself. I do it right on the step here in the basement. I got a little kind of little gym in the basement, and I just pop up and down, and I do my three sets of 10. Uh, if, it, if it's easy and you want to do 15, that's great. But for anyone in their sort of 50s, 60s, and 70s, 10, three sets of 10 is probably lots, 30 repetitions. What about um, uh, yep. an answer about just uh, uh, sort of jumping up and down in place with uh, the ball of the foot? Yeah, so skipping, if that's what you mean, would be good. It's, it's, yep. Yeah, it's pretty much a skip. Yeah. yeah, so in regards to getting it ready for tennis, what you can do is um, find a space on a floor that's nice and clean. There's lots, there's no clutter. Take some tape and put an X down on the floor. So kind of one this way and then one that way. And then pretend your feet are actually, I'm just going to show you this because it's easier to show you than to try and explain it. So if I have my X... I'm just going to kind of take this down so you can see my feet. So let's pretend there's a, there's a line here, and then there's a line that goes across here. So pretend your ankles are taped together, and you can actually just hop from side to side, just like that. And that Very would be good. a good sort of drill to start to get your tennis muscles ready. And then once you're comfortable with that, then you do 10 side to side, then you do 10 forward, and then 10 backward, okay? And then once you've done that, then I want you to do a 45-degree angle, Davis, so it's forward like that, and then back, okay? And then you can check the other plane. So you go from here and back. So what I'm doing is I'm hopping into those, that, those diagonal quadrants on the floor. And then w if you can comfortably do that after like four weeks with two feet, pretending that your ankles are kind of taped together and there's no symptoms in your Achilles tendon or your knees or your hips and you're feeling pretty good, well, guess what? How do you, prevent, how do you advance that? You do it on one foot. Right. And don't think of a big, huge vertical lift. Just think of a shift. So you're literally only jumping about an inch or two in the air. And then once you're comfortable with two, then you can just do one. And you don't have to do a huge jump either. And that will really wake up your kind of what we call eccentric loading uh, of all the, the spring muscles, I call them, for tennis and for, for any sort of activity to really get your body kind of revved up. So that's a really good kind of rehab thing that we'll do often with people after major surgeries where they're trying to re kind of stimulate their legs and get control of their legs. And what happens when we're not active, especially after surgery, is that the fast twitch fibers, the nerves, don't fire as fast anymore. So drills like that kind of wake up those fast twitch fibers so they start to fire quicker. Because if they're firing quicker, if you're on the tennis court, there's less chance of you losing your balance or spraining your ankle because those muscles are, are contracting quickly and adjusting to the changes in your body weight, you know, on the surface as well. Um, so give that one a little try. I think you'll probably enjoy that. And again, don't do big jumps. Just do little hops. So almost think of yourself like a little rabbit, just kind of back and forth. But if you do 10 of each one of those, you'll find that, whew, that really gets the heart rate up and you actually have to take a little break. Uh, but then make sure you do your calf stretch afterwards as well and your quad stretch because those are the muscles that will really be working. I'll definitely try that. Yeah, give it a try. It's something we, if you come into our gym and our clinic, uh, we always have tape on the floor and then you'll see where the tape used to be because we'll rip it up and quite often the, some of the adhesive stays down there, but we usually just leave it there and we use that for that reason, just to get people doing little hopping drills. Okay. Yeah, so give that a try too and we'll get you ready for the senior tennis tour there, Davis. <laughs> <laughs> tennis is a hard sport i tried it a couple of times my problem was i couldn't control the ball <laughs> i was like a friend of mine was a really good tennis player and he was a big guy and he could put man he hit the ball so hard at me i feel like i go to hit the ball and my racket would fly back because he was hitting it so hard and so i was like blair, launching him out of the the, the whole court you know blair, he was like oh gotta go get that one now <laughs> blair that r really rings true with me when i got graduated lenses for my glasses Okay. It threw everything off. I had to basically relearn. Wow. Yeah, that would be because you'd be you'd be constantly kind of trying to adjust yeah. your your field of vision. Yeah. 
at the same time. Yeah. yeah, but that's great. I mean, if you're passionate about that, uh, tennis is a great exercise because you're really using your body and you're hopping around, you're challenging your muscles and your nerves, and, and obviously you're increasing your heart rate too because when you're doing all those quick movements. Um, so that's great. I think that's something, if you can keep playing that, Davis, you're going to have a higher quality life. And uh, yeah, I always encourage people to get involved in some sort of activity, both in the winter and in the summer to keep their body moving and keep it healthy. And it's really important to do different activities too. Don't just do the same thing all year long. What happens with athletes that do the same thing all year long, when I first graduated quite a few years ago, young kids especially would just do a sport, say for example, hockey in the winter, and then they'd have the summer off and they'd do something different. Nowadays, they do hockey in the winter and they do hockey camps all year. They almost play all year round. And these are the ones that have parents that are really pushing them to, you know, make the NHL and things like that. And these kids come in with overuse injuries because they don't get any time off to recover from all these other stuff that they've been doing. Um, so it is important to kind of have a variety of things that you do as well. Yeah. Good. Anyone else have any uh, quick questions for me while we got my attention? No? Okay. Where was I now? I was about to close there, I think. We talked about, oh yeah, we did the rating and we did the, uh, oh yeah, and just feedback in general. Uh, please send Bell an email or uh, even just in the chat box if you have any feedback for us. We want to keep improving these. I hope you enjoyed the music uh, this morning. If you came on early enough, uh, Bell's now figured out how to put the music into our weight room. So we're listening to uh, YouTube, beautiful day this morning. While we're waiting for you guys and we're dancing, uh, chair dancing. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, you guys have a great day and uh, get out in that. Uh, even if it's rainy weather, get out and still do your exercise. And uh, if you're finding that your clothing is wet and it's not working well, then definitely give John a call and see if you can't get some clothes, clothing that breathes and keeps you warm. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, just fire them back to us and we can certainly try and help you the best we can. All right. So take care. And I'll see you guys next week. All right. Bye-bye.